What is going on everyone? My name is Kudmore and welcome back to the New Beginner Java Game Programming Tutorial Series Episode 32. In this episode we are going to work on item drops. So when we cut down a tree we might receive an item such as wood and later on we can use that item to maybe craft other items in the game such as weapons and armor. So first things first, in my assets class I just added a new image called wood and this will be used for when I cut down the tree, this will be the image of the item of wood that the tree drops for me. And for the rock I'm just going to use the same rock texture, just it'll be drawn a little bit smaller, you'll see that in a little bit. Also in the Entity class I just set my default health a little bit lower just for testing. And now we have to move on to the Entity Manager class because I made a pretty big mistake in here. So go on into the tick method of the Entity Manager here. In here we are occasionally removing entities from this Entity Manager array. So we might be in the middle of iterating through this array in this for loop here and we might be removing an entity right there in the middle. And in some cases that will actually cause us to skip over an entity that we have not yet ticked. And if you're removing many many entities in this for loop at one time, then we're going to be skipping other entities and their tick method updates. Which is really really bad. So we actually don't want to do it this way. We are going to change how we iterate through this entities array here. So instead of a for loop, we are actually going to change this to a while loop. And the best way to iterate or go through an array list and be able to remove items in that list at the same time is to use an iterator. And they're really easy to use, just follow along here. We're going to have an iterator of type entity because we're going to be iterating over or looping over our entities array. And I'm just going to name that it for iterator. And that's going to equal our entities array list dot iterator. And that is a method. And in this while loop, we're going to say while the iterator dot has next. So as long as this iterator object that we got from our entities array list has some item, then we know that we have entities that we must tick. So we're going to say entity e equals, and instead of entities dot get i, we're going to say our iterator dot get, oops, sorry, our iterator dot next. And that'll do the same thing, it's just essentially going to loop through our entities array, except we are now using an iterator to do that, which is a little bit of a better method to do that. Next down here, when we remove this entity, instead of calling the entities.remove function, we can simply say iterator, so our iterator object dot remove. And this will safely and properly remove this entity from our array list while still allowing us to loop through the array list without skipping over other entities. So that's the only change we should have to make. If we go ahead and run this, we get the same exact thing, just it's a little less buggy this time. And it's actually good that I caught this because we're going to have to use this again later on in this episode. So let's move on to getting items done. Now I'd like to point out here that the method that I'm going to use to create items is by far not the most efficient. I had to choose between teaching you guys an efficient method and a method that's the easiest to understand and the most practical to implement in a really simple tutorial game like this. Now the structure that we're going to handle items and the item manager that we will create is going to be similar to that of our tile class and our entity class kind of at the same time. So let me just jump on into it here. Right click on your main package, we'll create a new class and we will call this item and we'll plop that into the dot items package like so. Alright, now this item class is of course going to have a few variables. First we'll start off with the final integer variables. We're going to have item width which I'll just set equal to 32 and I'll do the same for item height and this will essentially be the size that items are rendered at in our game because all items will be rendered at the same size. You'll see what I mean. And we will also have a picked up uh, final variable and set that equal to a number that's negative such as, I don't know, like negative one to make it easy and I'll explain what that variable is for in a little bit. Next we're going to want a protected handler object called handler also a protected buffered image object that will be the texture of the item, as well as a protected string, which will be the name of the item, and a protected final int id, which is the id of the item, of course. And along with these variables, we're also going to want a few more. We're going to have some protected ints called x and y, and we'll also have one called count. Once again, I'll explain what all these are used for in a little bit, but let's go ahead and create the item constructor here. Now the item constructor is only going to take in three things. It's going to take in a buffered image, the texture, the name of the item, let's see, name, and the ID of the item. So we're just going to go ahead and set up the texture and the name and the ID. And then we are going to set count equal to one. Now what is this count variable here? Well this count variable is mainly going to be used when we begin working on the player's inventory. But since we haven't gotten that far yet, 
this is basically going to store the amount of items in this single item object. So for instance, if we have a wood item, instead of creating 50 new instances of that wood item, we can just have one instance of that wood item and set the count equal to 50, indicating that the player has 50 of those. Again, we'll use this much more when we get to inventories. But for now, we'll just set it equal to 1 as the default. Now if this count ever becomes negative 1, or our picked up value up here, then that will let us know that we have to remove this item from the world and put it into the player's inventory. Again, something that we're not going to worry about too much in this tutorial. Now let's move on to the tick method. The tick method for items is initially going to have nothing in it, and of course we're going to want a render method taking in graphics g, and instead of just taking in graphics g, we're also going to take in an x and y position. But at the same time, we're going to have another render method, obviously named the same exact thing, except it's not going to take in these x and y parameters here. Instead, this one is just going to call the render method that we wrote below with its graphics g and the x and y variable that the item is currently storing up here. This all may sound a little bit crazy and confusing at first, don't worry, I'll explain it all in the end. Now let's go back to this original render method here and actually draw the texture of this item. So g draw image, and we'll draw the texture at the x and y parameter passed in, and of course the width and height of it and null as the last parameter. And before I forget, in this other render method here, where we just render according to the x and y parameters, or I'm sorry, variables that this item has, we have to remember to cast them to an int because we will actually be subtracting the handler.getGameCamera dot get x offset variable, and we'll be doing the same thing for the y coordinate that we pass in as well. So dot get uh, y offset, and we make sure we do y minus that. So remember to do that or your items are definitely not going to be drawn correctly. Now since we haven't actually taken in a handler object as a parameter in our constructor here, that means our handler object might be null. Which means that if we ever run this piece of code, we're going to get an exception because handler is null and we can't access anything in it. So we have to check. If our handler object is null, so essentially it's nothing, we have not set it yet, just return. We're not going to allow this render method to run because it'll cause an error. Alright, let's go ahead and create a bunch of getters and setters here. I'm going to create them for the count, handler, id, name, texture, x and y, I suppose all of those, and we will just add those in here, and these are our getters and setters. And I think I lost my render method way down here. I'm just going to move that back up to the top for us, up here like so. But we're not done yet. We're going to add a couple of more helper methods here. One is going to be a public void set position, taking in an x, whoops, an x and a y parameter, and this is just going to set those x and y variables of this item class. And we're also going to add a very, very, very important method, which is called a public item. So it will return an item object called create new, like that. And I'm going to make sure I capitalize this. And this will take in an x and y parameter as well. Now this create new method is just going to create a copy of the item class that's currently here. And that's simple. We're going to create an item object i equal to a new item. And we're just going to pass along the same texture, the same name, and the same ID to this new item. And we are going to return that item. And just for convenience, we will set the position of this new item to whatever parameters we passed in to the create new method. Now before I get to explaining this, we have to add even more to this item class. So this was all the class stuff. And up here, we are going to have the item handler. Now this is going to look almost exactly the same as our tile class right now. We're going to have a public static item array called items, and we'll just set that equal to a new item array of 256 items for now. Obviously, if you have more than 256 items, you'll want to change that number. Anyways, this is going to be just like the tiles array in our tile class, and we're going to create a public static item object for every item that we want to create. So for instance, my wood item is just going to equal a new item with the wood texture that I created. We'll pass it in a name called wood, and I'll give it an ID of zero. Now, of course, if you had items that had special abilities and things, you can always just override this item class and create new instances of that specific item. But for now, these general items will work just fine for my explanation purposes. Next, I'll make a rock item like so, rock, and make sure I pass in 
the rock image to this item, and I'll name it rock item instead. And just like the tile class, in the constructor of the item, we're going to want to set that items array at the ID that we passed into this constructor equal to this item right here. And that should conclude this item class. Now let me get to explaining this because this looks really messy and crazy right now. So up here we have something that looks almost exactly like the tile class code. We have an array of items, and this is going to store essentially one instance of every single item in our game. For instance, the wood item and the rock item, both with different IDs. Now these IDs are really important because when we get to making save files, we want to make sure that we know where every item in the game is and what type of item it is, as well as the amount of items that the user has. And we'll do that by accessing or storing these IDs. And to make it easier for us, what we can do is essentially access this items array at any ID we wish, so if we access the items array at zero, that will get us this wood item right here. And we can simply call the create new method on that, which is going to create a copy of a wood item. It's just going to create a new item using the same data that that wood item, for instance, already has, texture, name, and ID. It'll set the position of it and return that new item. Now what's going on with this position stuff in these two render methods right here? Well, an item can be in two states. The item can be either in the game world lying on the ground, or the item can be in the player's inventory. If the item is in the player's inventory, then we're going to want to render that item at a specific spot on the screen in a specific inventory slot, for instance. And in that case, we would use this render method with the three parameters with X and Y in it so we can specify where on the screen to display that item to the user. But items can also be lying on the ground in the game world, which is why they needed an X and Y position. And that is what we're going to use this render method for without the X and Y parameter that will be used to render this item on the game world. I already kind of explained the count variable, even though we're not really going to be using it in this tutorial, but this is essentially our item class here. Hopefully I didn't go too fast over that. If you guys have any questions, once again, please feel free to ask me. But like I said, things like the count variable we aren't going to be using quite yet. So now we have a way of creating items and things, but now we need a way to actually store those items that are in the game world lying on the ground. So we are going to go ahead and open up our uh, items package and create a new class called the item manager. And if you haven't already guessed it, this item manager is going to look extremely similar to the entity manager. This one doesn't have as much code, it's actually going to be quite simple. So we're going to have a constructor taking in a handler object, and we'll set that handler object. And we're also going to have whoops, an array list of items, so a private array list of items called items. Make sure to import all of this fancy stuff. And we are going to need the tick method. Whoops tick method here, as well as one me render method. We don't need two render methods this time. And that will take in a graphics G. Now this item manager is not going to be the inventory or anything. This item manager is only going to store items that are currently in the game lying on the ground. And we are also going to create another method called add item here, which will just take in any item called I. And this is just going to add it to the items array and make sure in our constructor we initialize that items array. That way we don't get a null object. And I'll go ahead and create a getter for our handler object, like so. And that is our getters and setters. So we have this add item method, which will simply add an item to this items array list up here. And in the tick method, we are going to tick all items. In the render method, we are going to render all items. So for item i in the items array, we are just going to render that item using G. And we'll use the render method with only one parameter because we want it to use the items X and Y position in the world. Okay, now in the tick method here, we are actually going to use the same method that I just taught you in the beginning of this video in the entity manager, using that iterator to basically go through every item in our array. This time we're going to create an iterator of items because we're iterating through items, called it and equal that to the items.iterator method like that. And while that iterator has next, so while it still has something to iterate or go over, we're going to say item i equals iterator.get, or I'm sorry, iterator.next, I keep doing that. We're going to go ahead and tick that item, and we're going to say if the item.get count, so if the count of that item equals item.picked up, so basically if the count equals negative one, 
That means that the player has picked up that item and we should remove it from the game world and we're going to add it to the player's inventory. Now since we haven't gotten to the inventory yet, we will just remove it from the game world. So we'll just call it .remove, which will remove it from the list safely and properly. And that's the item manager class. Really simple and it's almost exactly the same as the entity manager class. However, I did forget one thing. Down here in this add item method, we want to set the handler of that item to the handler that this class has. Because remember that items have their handler object as null or nothing to begin with. So whenever we add an item to the item manager, we want to make sure that we set the handler object of that item so that it's not null and we'll actually end up rendering it to the screen. All right, in our world, we are going to have to have an item manager object, of course. So item manager, item manager, and go ahead right below the item, or I'm sorry, entity manager. We'll create a new instance of the item manager, passing in handler as a parameter, and make sure that we go ahead and tick this item manager and we're gonna go ahead and render it. Now, I'm actually gonna render my items below entities, so I'm gonna make sure that I render the item manager first. That's that, and we'll go ahead and create some getters and setters for that item manager, and I suppose I'm also gonna create one for handler, because I haven't already. So I'm just going to add those getters and setters in the game. So hopefully, if you render game, you're not gonna get any errors, but of course, if we start attacking this tree, then it's not gonna drop anything for us because we haven't quite changed that yet. So in the tree class here, we have a method called die. This is called whenever our player basically cuts the tree down or destroys it. So whenever the player destroys a tree, we want to drop a piece of wood or we want to drop a wood item. So how do we do that? Well, it's quite simple. We're gonna do handler.getWorld dot get item manager. So we're going to get that item manager and we're going to add an item to the world. Now we already have a series of items that we can choose from that are stored inside of this items array or in this item class, just like this. So if we want to add a wood item to the game, all we have to do is in the add item parameter here, add item dot wood item dot create new. We're going to call that create new method. So we're going to create a copy of the wood item with the same exact properties. And we're going to set the X and Y position to the X and Y position of this tree here, just for simplicity. Of course, you might want to change that so that it drops a little bit better. Maybe you could change it so that it drops in random places around the tree. And you can even change it to drop a random amount of items. But just as an example, we'll do this and make sure that you go ahead and cast these variables into ints because this um, tree class and any entity class uses floats as x and y positions, so cast them over to integers. I'm going to do the exact same thing for whenever we kill or chop down or, I don't know, maybe mine out a rock, except instead of creating a copy of a wood item, I'll create a copy of a rock item. Wow, that was a lot of stuff to take in, guys. Again, if you have any questions, please ask them below. I tried to explain everything as best as I could, and remember, we haven't used everything in the item class just yet, so don't get too worried. We'll be working with that quite a bit in the next probably two tutorials. So let me go ahead and chop down this tree, and as you can see, actually it's kind of hard to see, but I have an image of a wooden log up there. Of course, if I walk over it, I'm not able to pick it up because we haven't added that functionality yet, but there you can see that wooden item. If I do the same thing to the rock, then I have now, as you can see that rock, it looked like it got smaller, but really that's my rock image item there. So that is an item being rendered. Again, I can't quite pick it up just yet, but that will come in the next couple of tutorials. So we got entities to drop items. Now we're beginning to see our game get a little bit more use and getting the player to actually want to discover new things. So go ahead, add a bunch of items. Try and make it so that maybe when you kill or cut down the tree, maybe the items appear around the tree instead of just in the same position every time, or maybe make it a random amount of items that every entity drops. Thank you so much for watching everyone, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.